Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel, Sunny Stiver here. Today, we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject, detoxing <laughs> and the suffering that comes from detoxing, right? So there's a term called herxing and it was actually um, Dr. Herxheimer back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, that discovered this phenomenon that goes on with people when they started taking an antibiotic for treatment of Lyme disease, syphilis, etc., where they would have an onset of a fever of, you know, chills, etc. Um, it's become this generic type of, hold on, let me see if I can get me centered better, sorry. I was trying to show you all the stuff that I well I'll talk about anyway um, it, it become it's become this generic kind of term that we use when we are detoxing from something whether it be drugs alcohol sugar heavy metals toxic metal load parasites bacterial overgrowth when you start going after a protocol and you're detoxing something, newsflash, campfire in the bathroom floor. <laughs> and so what I wanna talk about today is what I did, what I chose to do, and how incredibly important it is to have a strategy, right? So, and schedule it, schedule. <laughs> Project, I am a master project manager. I was a project manager for Home Depot. My father was a contractor developer. We, our whole world revolves around project management theology. You start with an end result in your head of, you know, for when dad was building a house, it was a completed house. And he would work that project backwards to a starting point of sitting at his desk, right? He was also a hot rod builder and actually Biohacking and hot rod building are a lot alike in that he'd take a hot rod, he'd bring home this bucket of rust, he'd strip it all the way down to the frame, he'd remove every nut and bolt, he'd de-rust it and start from the ground up. $35,000 later, and you know, some, somewhere between a year and a half to two years, he had a beautiful hot rod on the way to the World of Wheels car show. Biohacking and restoring your body to its optimum position is very much the same, right? So, and one of the things I see people do that biohackers do not is they have a paradigm of, oh God, this is so much suffering and biohackers, they're like, yeah. Let's get it on. I'm going to feel like crap. Campfire, bathroom floor. I'll see you in three weeks. And because we understand our, our objective and our objective is supreme functionality with, at all levels. I talked about that yesterday. So it's really a paradigm shift of how you manage this whole thing. So schedule it hold on i made some notes okay because i didn't want to lose my train of thought so you'll hear terms dr paul solandino calls it dumping when he's referring to oxalates and when somebody goes off of vegetables and the high toxicity of oxalates and the toxicity of plants oh god that's another video we'll get to that but he calls it he refers to it as dumping and your body, when you stop, when it stops having to negotiate the toxicity of oxalate and dealing with oxalate, oxidative stress, <clears throat> it dumps. And there's a whole list of symptoms that comes with that. <laughs> um, you'll hear people talk about detox, detox reactions too. So schedule it and know that it's a mental game. Yes, your body is going to suffer. You're going to feel like crap. You may feel like you have the flu. You may, you may feel chills. You may feel AI. My experience was fatigue, right? And just low energy in general. And then 
I had several couple of weeks, two pretty intense weeks, where every joint in my body ached like I was 150 years old. It was not fun. And this is where the mental game, and you have got to understand what is going on in your body or you'll bail, right? I mean, people, study just came out six months ago, 88% of North America is in a metabolic crisis and have no clue. Or if they have a clue, they're unwilling to go through the suffering to rectify that. So if you're lucky enough to have the inspiration to be part of the 12%, Kudos to you. How I managed this was first thing I do always, always in my house. It drives my husband bananas. I am listening nonstop to some kind of podcast from somebody, whether it's Dr. Paul and I did that list yesterday. I did that video yesterday. I am non-stop. Oh, I even have it back there on my playlist. Number one hack for staying on track. Um, I am non-stop, constant education. Uh, that's number one when you're going through that. Number two on my list is music. And I don't care who you are or how old you are. You can be 90 years old or you can be 13. You're going to have a playlist that is your favorites, right? That you tie into having a good time, whatever that is. Um, grab a hold of the identity of when you weren't so screwed up, right? And tap into having a good time in your head. That's big. Um, Epsom salts and baking soda baths. So two cups of Epsom salts, one cup baking soda in the hottest water you can stand for as long as you can stand it or until you get relief, right? So you'll see um, if you're in any of the like adrenal fatigue groups or what have you, oh, I can't do hot water because it drops my blood pressure. Of course it does. It's supposed to. It's supposed to relax you. You finish your baths off or your showers off in cold water. I, when I take a shower, I take a mega hot shower. It's just who I am. I love hot showers. But I always finish it off with 30 seconds straight cold water. If I'm doing a tub, if I've gotten overheated, I have a, maybe I'll take you into the bathroom. I have a handle and I straight cold water before I get out. That's the other one. Strategy. Oh yeah. Activated charcoal overnight on an empty stomach. So when you are going after, and I don't know what you're going after or what protocol you're doing, I had to do a deep parasite, deep bacterial, um, move heavy metals, right? And I chose to do it all at the same time. <laughs> I circumvented my doctor. I'm like, I already feel like crap. She didn't want me to do heavy metals the same time that I did the deep parasite, deep bacterial because it's so hard on the body. I'm like, uh, sorry, I'm already on the bathroom floor. What the hell difference does it make why I'm there? Let's get this party done over with. So that's what I chose to do. I'm not telling you don't listen to your doctor. I'm just telling you I am my own doctor and I ran it the way I wanted to run it. So activated charcoal on an empty stomach overnight. Your body has this miraculous system that overnight it does a slew. It is so busy when you're asleep. It's incredible. So here's what happens when you're asleep. Your liver cycles and detoxes. Your hypothalamus in your brain shrinks down and your, your spinal fluid goes up and washes your brain your kidneys cycle, your gallbladder cycles, it all, there's all this stuff going on while you're asleep. Okay, so let's think that through for a second. If you're moving heavy metals, right, and you are cycling all this stuff, you need something there to absorb this stuff and help it on its way out. 
you don't want to be moving heavy metals and sitting in this soup and not actively helping it move it all, all the way out activated charcoal the other thing I did was enemas coffee enemas are bloody amazing they just are you will see different theologies from different people I chose to do them and I do while I was going through all of that I was doing a coffee enema well actually for a couple of weeks I was doing them every day um, and I was 20 we I did I did my de parasite de bacterial overgrowth I didn't even start passing parasites until I was into the second protocol <laughs> I mean so I actually did a full protocol and then I went into a second one just to make sure and I didn't even start passing parasites until I had gotten into the second protocol so I was like oh god yeah we flushing those babies right on out the other problem that I have specifically to me is my microbiome has never been right I hit the planet as a fetal alcohol baby I was constipated from day one I hit the planet my poor mom she has got nightmare stories about having to give me suppositories and enemas and trying to get prunes down me and it was just it's never never been right so did I get a little OCD anal about it? Maybe. Um, there are cultures around the Ayurvedic system, medical system out of the East. They do them every day. So, yeah. I just wanted to love on my body and help it as much as I possibly could. Keep those puppies moving because I didn't want to spend any more time on the bathroom floor than I had to. Another part of my strategy that actually was by default... <clears throat> Because I hadn't wound up being so incredibly malnourished, being a vegetarian on fish, that I had I wound up having to go in for IV therapy. And I spent one month, the whole month of July. So this happened simultaneously. Here's what happened. So what happened was I did the first deep parasite, deep bacterial protocol. I was into my second one started passing parasites and I went to the floor and I went to the floor hard because I was so malnourished and it wasn't showing up in my blood but it was showing up in my hair there is literally nothing about my physiology I don't know at this point nothing um, and that has to do and here's the difference between what goes on in your blood and what comes out in your hair is how your body is synthesizing and utilizing what you're actually the food you're shoving down your throat so I did one month of two IV therapies a week that was the month of July so my time on the bathroom floor I literally spent the entire month of July on the bathroom floor or at my doctor's office um, getting IV therapy in August I went to one time a week and then in September I went to shots and now I'm off of that now so but I was so malnourished yeah we screwed that one up um, so this is what this is here let me see if I can I'll just, I'll just hold it. okay so NAC NAC is amazing for detoxification I'm gonna be going off of this I've been on it now for nine months I will be going off of it very soon Splorina chlorella it moves heavy metals I've been on this for six months and it takes a while guys to move heavy metals it does it takes a while the only thing that crosses the blood-brain barrier for detoxification that I'm aware of, short of forced chelation, is um, cilantro. And I eat my cilantro and I eat a bunch of it. So, and I may go to tablets. We'll see. We'll see after my next test on uh, where I stand. Um, activated charcoal. 
and activated charcoal will make you constipated just so you're aware that's why the enemas are so incredibly important you do not want that stuff hanging out in your body that's the other thing well here we finish this i do a low dose of oregano oil at every meal for now this is not a permanent thing this has is until i am convinced or contest that those parasites are gone the parasites that i had are extremely difficult to get rid of i've not had the opportunity to drop another 400 dollars on another gi mapping and so what i don't want because they have a life cycle right they'll go dormant and then they'll come yeah they have a life cycle so i don't want to let off the gas too soon and then wind up in a situation where now i have another overgrowth again so that's my personal choice that's what i'm doing that's my strategy milk thistle tea amazing for your liver good stuff um my liver and my internal organs are in exceptional condition i just had a cat scan to prove it so when i went carnivore I had some discomfort because I literally was eating no fat whatsoever. None. I mean, fatty fish and sardines and salmon, but outside of, so I had to go to, and I woke up one night feeling like somebody stabbed me with an ice pick right in the middle of my gallbladder. I was like, oh God, what is this? And so i went to my primary care physician she's an amazing do she helps me and she'll research something if i get stuck on something and we ran a cat scan and every single one of my internal organs is in exceptional physical condition pretty impressed with that actually so yeah that's it that's how i handle herxing and having support right having the right frame of mind picturing yourself of okay and here's here's my here's my there's literally nothing about me i don't know nothing on my toxic metal load and i talked about this in yesterday's video i'm at 99 out of a scale of 100 <laughs> of prosidium city yeah me um i'm at 83 on mercury i am and then milder i am casium palladium selenium thalimium tin and vanna vanadium yeah you know those 50 dollar words that only scientists can pronounce so, and all of those are higher than 50%, 50 on a scale of one, one to a hundred. So, and that was as of May. So May, now here's the interesting thing. The detox, the water fasting that I did last year, can you imagine what this report would have looked like before that? I mean, in my GI mapping, what was interesting is I did not have any inflammation markers in, on my GI mapping, and I didn't have any candida. I had knocked all that stuff out before I even had surgery. See, before I did my explant, um, had, I, so I started detoxing July 1st. And I didn't explant until October 3rd, 23rd. So July, August, September, I was four months into detoxing before I ever had surgery. So, and then my GI mapping, we did, let's see if I can find it here really fast. I may not be able to find it here really fast. This file is pretty thick. I think we did my GI mapping Let's see, if I did this in May, I did it in June, I think. Yeah, or at the tail end of May, because I was six weeks into the protocol when I went to the floor. <laughs> yeah, if you notice my playlist, I did a video on baseline hacking 
uh, biohacking baseline testing. And then there's this long span of time that there's nothing. That's because I was laying on the bathroom floor and in the tub. And I spent a lot of time in that tub. Here, I'm gonna show you guys. I'll show, I'll show you my favorite room in the house. And I'm gonna take my tripod. Let's see how this, well, actually. This is it. It's cleaning day today, excuse the mop. But I have, I have, there's my like pillows. And I throw those out on the floor every morning. There's the enema bucket. There's the bathtub. Literally, I spent the entire month of July there. And August too, a little bit. Let's see if I can get you guys back in the my tripod without screwing it. Crap, nope, I accidentally turned it off. Now I gotta figure out how to splice two videos together. I think I got that one figured out. So, that's my strategy. And my position is, I wanna get through this as fast as I can. I'm fortunate, I don't have a job. Now see, you're, if you got kids and you have a job, you're gonna have to make your strategy different, right? It's doable. I mean, you just gotta get up earlier and plan an extra 45 minutes for the bathroom, right? And get through that. You will probably, okay, first of all, you're gonna lose your hair. When you start detoxing and you start pushing it, the toxins come out of your hair shaft. That's why women lose their hair. It's like, I do not want to lose my hair more than once. <laughs> Thanks. Last year, when I did the 11 day water only fast, I lost, literally lost half of my, my hair was about down to here. And it literally went to here all by itself because I lost 50% of my hair volume. Uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And on day eight, on day eight, what came from my body smelled like the men's urinal at the local biker bar on closing Saturday night. And I'd been sober for three years at that point. Now, okay, so just to recap, top this off, fasting lifestyle. If you do not get into a fasting lifestyle, you will never heal anything. There's not a biohacker on the planet that's not in a life, life, lifestyle of fasting. So this is how it goes for me. I protein load every other day on training day, um, which means I get up and I eat pretty much all day long. Straight protein. And then every other day, I push it 18 hours. So that gives me time to clean up. Then every Sunday, I push that 24 hours for a really solid cleanup. And then at the end of every month, the last three days of the month, I am moving to a 72 hour water only fast. The last 72 hour water fast I did, I had not done a fasting, a, a three day fast in a long time because I was just so freaked out about how much weight I had lost and I finally got over being skinny, right? It's like I'm finally over it because I feel so amazing. I will get the weight back in time because I'm training again and I'm protein loading and I'm building muscle. It will come back. And my former training weight was 127 to 132, but I was also cycling, right? I mean, I, I mean, menstrual cycle. Um, so that's the fasting and it's subject to change, right? Here's the other thing about biohackers. We do not get locked into anything. If it turns out that that doesn't work for me long-term, or if I'm not achieving the results that I'm, I'm chasing after, I will change that up. I will go a different route. It's not just like I went with carnivore. Okay, so I'm gonna do a whole video on carnivore. I screwed myself over on that one. I wound up, I wound up iron deficient. I wound up B12 deficient. I, mm, I screwed myself over so badly being vegetarian with fish. And you know, I had to eat some crow behind that one, but like I said in other previous videos, 
Dr. Salandino, educated out here in my hometown. Yeah, I finally got, got, I got, finally got the message. So now, and here's the other thing too, is we don't look at that as suffering. It's like, oh, but what if I can't eat, you know, whatever. It's like, man, when you feel this good and you feel this clear and you don't have to worry about what's for dinner other than, you know, how you're going to cook your hamburger or your meat. Or what, you know, am I going to barbecue or am I going to put it in a pan, right? That's the biggest decision we have. Uh, now, that's not to say that I'm not going to go to Thanksgiving, it's, you know, or Christmas and break out of that. But So, guys, those are my thoughts. That's how I did it. The only thing I would change, because I just didn't understand was last year when I did the Gerson protocol. That's just straight sugar. Carrots, apples, and greens is just like... Now that I'm in Dr. Paul's research about oxalates and the toxicity of plants, and, and I just I was like, oh God, what was I... Mm. But we know what we know, and it's about pivot. Well, I was going that way, and now I'm going this way. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's what biohackers do. We have the ability to change and adjust on a dime. That's the difference between us and the rest of the people that are stuck in the theology of, I'm suffering. <laughs> no, you're not. You're right, you are suffering. And you just have no idea how much you're suffering until you get to the other side. So guys, like, Hit that like button, make it turn blue. Um, share if this was helpful or if somebody else needs encouragement. And subscribe, hit the notification bell. Yeah, I forgot I'm supposed to say that. Yeah, I'm down the rabbit hole of <laughs> this whole YouTube thing is. Now I gotta go figure out how to splice two videos together because I messed it up putting it back in the tripod. Until next time, guys, YouTube saved my life, can save yours too. Stay legendary, my friends. We love you.